I couldn't possibly work in the house, especially when there used to be a lot of children around, and even when there aren't children, there are vacuum cleaners and people bustling about. No, I always write in this little hut. I always have. It, it is absolutely quiet up here. It's never swept out or dusted because no one's allowed to come up here to do that. I'm the only person who ever comes in to my little work hut. So it's full of everything. The only thing I, I, I did uh, remove about two years ago, uh, we had a goat that got in and there was some goat droppings on the floor and I thought, well, I better get a dustpan and sweep those up and I did. And every morning I sit down and I get myself really comfortable like this. That is the right slope for my writing board. Put my light on. I sharpen my pencils first. This funny little thing that I've had for years. It always works. Pour myself a bit of coffee. But I've taken a great deal of trouble with the actual chair I sit in and the place I put my feet which is tied to the legs of the chair so I don't shove it away when I press my feet against it. Also in the winter I get into a sleeping bag and that's right up to my chest. Finally you get settled. You get into a sort of nest and get really comfortable and then you're away. Well there's all sorts of funny things of gathered on this table beside me here over the years. Uh, for example, this, believe it or not, was one of my own hip bones, which was sawed off my hip because of osteo, there's osteoarthritis. And when they saw that off, they then put that in its place. It's called a prosthesis. What else have we got here? This, well, that, that, that's another operation. That's a spine, the result of a spine operation, one of the six I've had. These are the chippings of a, of a prolapsed disc in your spine. And uh, the surgeon put them in there and gave them to me. And they've been there for years, just for fun. It's looking and musing and correcting, and then, then you do a little writing and... and uh, in the end, you get something done, but your concentration is fairly intense. You, you, you're lost. You're into this world of the story that you happen to be doing. It, it's terrifically demanding, you know. What do I write? Four, four and a half hours a day. So a quarter of my waking hours, I am completely immersed in a dotty world of fantasy. And you come out, you know, in a kind of moony state.